Welcome back to Snippet Coder and we are back with our video. In this video, we will learn how to test our REST API by using VS Code with the help of one plugin that is Thunder Client. And this is the one of the best plugin I have ever used. So before starting the video, if you are new to our channel, subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. So first of all, we have to open our VS Code and there we have that tab for the extensions. And from there, we have to search the plugin that is Thunder client and this is the plugin. So we have to just install the plugin as this plugin is already installed in my system. So that's why I'm getting two options that is disable and the uninstall. And in your case, if you have not installed this plugin, you will get the button for the install here. After installing that, you will get that icon here that is Thunder client. And from here, you have to click on the new request. So here we have the multiple options. Like here, we have the multiple method for that request that is get request, post request, put request, delete request, patch request, head request, option request. So mostly we use four type of requests that is get request for getting the data. Second, we have that post request we will use for posting the data to the server. Then we have the put request that will be mainly used for updating the data. Then we have the last command which we ever use that is delete method that is used for deleting any data from the server. So let's get started with the get request. So this is the URL. And here you have to put the URL of your API. And in our case, we have the API for this one slash API slash users. And this API will return us the data. So here we have the option for the queries. We can pass the query string if required. If you put here ID, you can see here that query string is appended here. But here the requirement is not for any query strings. So we will not use. Then we have the headers option. We can also put the headers like if you put here content type, we can put here content type as a application JSON and also we can get the others option also here. From here also we can pass that authorization token also if required. But in the get request, we will not require such options. Then we have the body here that will be used in the case of the post request. So now if I click on the send request here, you can see here we are getting all that request of that API and here the JSON we are getting here and here the status we are getting status 200 OK. That means the request is successfully generated in the server and server return us the data and we are getting the response here. Also we can get the any selected data also suppose if we put a slash and here from and we put any ID here like we put here two. then we will get the data for that particular user also. But now we are getting the status as a 200 OK. So now if I want a status as a 400 like not found, we can put any invalid ID here and we will click here send. You can see here we are getting here 404 not found and the response we are getting null here. So this is the status on the base of that status. We can show that uh, you can say any message to the user also in the application, in the web application or in the mobile application. So now let's test that next method that is post request. So here in the post request, we have to pass a JSON because this is that API is based on the JSON here. And for posting that we have to first click on that body. And from here, we have the multiple options like JSON, XML, text. Then we have the form here. Then we have the form encode. Then we have the GraphQL also. Then we have the binary also. But here in the sample, we are just using that JSON. And here we have to create a post request here. And from here, we will create the object here. Here we have to put name. And name we will put here Raman. Then we have to put here job. We will put job as a developer. So now if we click on the send request, it will create the data in the server and return us that response here. You can see here we are getting here status 201. That means user has created some data and that's why we are getting here 201. And here the response we are getting here name, job, then we are getting the ID here. Then we are getting that created at, at what time that request has been created. So in this way, we can execute our post request. So now if we have to update this data, we have to use the put request here. We have to select a put and here we have to just copy this ID here and we will put this ID here and the name if we change it to Raman Singh. Now if I click on the send request, you can see here we are getting the update data here. In the name you can see we are getting a Raman Singh and then the job is same updated at we are getting the time also in the status you can notice we are getting a 200 OK because the request has been updated in the server not created that's why we are getting 200 in the case of that request created we are getting 201 in the same way we can use a delete command also we have to select a delete 
and there this response is not required this json is not required we can only have to put the id here and here we are just putting this id and we click on the send request you can see here 204 no content that means the request had been executed successfully and we are not getting any data because that user has been deleted from the server so you can see here if i click on the get request and we put this user id here now if i click on the send request we are getting here 404 because that data has been deleted from the server that's why we are not getting any response from here so in this way you can test your api so it will help you before implementing the api in the web application or in or in your mobile application you can just test your application before giving that api to any developer or you can use in your application you can just test yourself first with the help of this vs code you can also use the alternative of this one with the help of that postman also there also you can do the same thing and also you can create the swagger also in your api itself and from there also you can do that testing so i hope you like the video if you want these type of video do let me know in the comment box section i will try to make these types of video more and more so thank you for watching the video